think we should be live soon. Setting up meeting for Facebook Live. Thank you very much. Let's close it to back. Okay, uh, it looks like we are live now. Welcome on board, Mr. Goswal. Welcome back. Um, as we see, um, the the uh, the party leader himself was on 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 live Facebook, trying to talk to the MPs to vote for this important bill, one of the most important bills in their careers. Most of them will never have any bill as important as this. And it's, it's, as he said, it's, an, it's a golden opportunity for them to do the right thing. So um, I'll, I'll let Mr. Goswell continue what he was saying just before we had a break. Uh, welcome on board, Mr. Goswell. Well, thank you very much. As it looks as if Mr. Davo has said things that we've already covered, but we will try to expand on it. Yeah. I mean, looking at the whole process of constitutional review in the Gambia, I wasn't born I was too, I was I wasn't old enough to remember what happened in 1970, what happened in 1966 when Sadawda tried to have a referendum for Gambia to become a republic. Yeah. He first lost that referendum and then he went in 19 and tried again in 1970 and won it. Yeah. And when he won it, we had a constitution. I am not aware of any um, consultation ever being conducted. There's a likelihood that the, the, the draft constitution was, was produced to parliament and parliament approved it. Yeah. But I leave it to historians who can recall what happened. But coming towards that, the 1970 constitution, in as much that we call it the best constitution we've had for, had its flaws. And people like me did not support the PP regime or support another part, political party because there was constitutional reform on the plates if they were elected. Yeah. And that was really that was really something that impressed me that we are going to change our constitution for it to reflect to the normal standards and norms of international law. You have to look at it from this way that the 1970 constitution is the first post-independence constitution. And with the greatest respect, you can call it a neo-colonial constitution because it had all these bits and pieces. When Sadawda was toppled and the, the, the APRC came with a constitutional review, it was something that we were all looking for to see that we can change our constitution for the better. Regrettably, it wasn't well, it wasn't well done for the needs of the Gambian people. The constitution, the actual draft, if you had it, you'll see a lot of things which were quite interesting. But as time went on, before the final, before it was put to the people, they started making some chops, some changes. Yeah. Now, according to statistics, they're saying that this constitution, the 1997 constitution, had 59 amendments. I could recall speaking one time to a legal person and I said to him, I want a copy of the constitution. And what did he say to me is, it depends which one you which one you're referring to, because there have been so many amendments. Now, we've gone through this whole struggle over the years. During the days of NAD, during the days of um, any alliance, we're going to have a constitutional review. We've come to the point where we've agreed. We had somebody that when he was elected as president or when he was campaigning, he said he was going to have constitutional review. They're going to have the constitution. And when he came in, the first thing he was saying is, I need to do, I need to do five years. When they pushed him for three years, he said, no, I need to do five years because there's a lot of reforms that I have to do, especially the constitution. And it now saddens me that having done a tremendous job under the circumstances, the CRC, someone somewhere thinks that he's disadvantaged and the constitution has should not go to the second reading unless a particular piece of legislation is changed 
Now, when you look at it, this constitution, no constitution in this world is perfect. You're going to have what we say a give and take scenario. And if out of 2 million electroactive legislation that they're talking about only affects two people, Sadauda and not Sadauda, Yaya Jame and Adam Abaro. And just because of that, we will have to change the constitution. We will have to vote no. That is sad. That is sad. Because it's already been said that we spent about 100 million towards this. They came here, they spoke to us. We, got, we had so many programs. We sacrificed our time. We gave them our submissions. I went to some of this, gave my points. Other people did. We had the debates with agreed and disagreed. And there came one document. Now, this is document. It's not their document. It's the people's document. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what people are saying now is that if we had given them, if the National Assembly wanted to do a constitutional review, they should have taken it to themselves and reviewed the constitution. Yes. But what you had there was unfortunately, and with the gives us respect, it would have it wouldn't have been as far reaching as what we see now. But that's what that's that's what um, Halifa Salah's um uh, argument is that um he is arguing that we should have taken that old constitution and amended it, and we should not we should not have spent so much money and time on this one. Um, you know, you could he would have saying that you know the ones that they cannot we cannot change then we take those things to to referendum. Do you think that's a, that's a, that's a valid um, argument? Well, um, he has a point, but the problem is the whole giving this constitution a holistic approach, looking at it from the from the list, taking section by section. I think it would have been a tedious task, and with the greatest respect to my parliament, to our parliamentarians, who I always should say is the best parliament we've had. Yeah, I wouldn't want to give them that. That would be a heavy burden on the parliamentarians. That would be a heavy burden. And secondly, we do not have this culture of lobbying, consultation, all that stuff. How will they consult the people? How will you do submissions? Are you just going to pass a draft bill and change it without consulting the people? How would you do it? Absolutely. There wouldn't be, be, be any consultations. What, They're what talking you, about themselves, taking it upon themselves yes. and, and, and changing it. Yeah. Um, you it's, see, at the moment, up to now, we haven't got the, ele um, the electoral act been amended. That's been a problem. And don't forget, somebody like Solo Sandman died because he was fighting for electoral reform. That hasn't been done yet. And now you're telling me you're going to give the constitution to it. I mean... They haven't done much. They haven't done anything at all. In fact, I think the only piece, two pieces of important, important legislative uh, legislations they have changed were the age limit for the, um, the the presidency and the vice presidency, as well as the um, the their own um, tenure. You know, making sure that if if they if well, the party, nothing is going to happen to them. And the third one was the Karamo, the Karamo Sonko one, where where you know the local government act that they just changed. So. Well, I mean, um, I wouldn't go that far. But what I'm saying is, do they have the capacity to amend a whole constitution, yeah. considering that there are so many irregularities in that constitution? Yeah. Jame chopped and changed the constitution as it suits him. Yeah. I had somebody give it at this. When these people thought, I'll give you one example. Lieutenant Sane was arrested for treason. Yeah. Went to court. He said, I want a trial by jury. Mm -hmm. Straight away, they passed the law to, to abolish trial by jury. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Moro Jaula won the, the um, chieftaincy at San Sami. Mm -hmm. Hussein Udabo started bringing up cases for other areas for them to have ele uh, elections for the chieftaincy. What did they do? They scrapped section fifty-six. Absolutely, and some of the some of the things these that things they were, were in fact illegal. And and I think um, um, uh, Kemeseng Jamme took took them to court because yes, I mean it's precisely so. They lost Banjul. Mm -hmm. The first they lost Banjul um, on the first past the post direct election for the mayor. And straight away, what did they do? They scrapped the local government act, changed the law. 
Yeah. This is what has been happening over the years. When one jammer get is threatened, he changes the law. Yeah. And this is what happened all over long, all along, up to the point that we do not, we cannot recognize the constitution that we voted for yeah. and the constitution that we're using. Because somebody is using it as his own constitution. And now we have this situation where once in our lifetime, I left that day to go to that place to say, look, I will not be doing justice to myself if I do not take part in the consultation process. Absolutely, absolutely. Because tomorrow I want to tell my grandchildren that when, when it mattered, I stood up. Mm -hmm. And today, all that hard work, someone somewhere, just because he is put, just because he's affected. So you think you think all these all these no votes are because um, uh, Adam Barrow thinks he cannot go for the third, the third time? Well, the problem is it's quite it's quite disrespectful for him to think that. In fact, because the problem is what makes him believe that he's going to win next elections? Exactly, exactly. And that's 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 quite disrespectful to the government people. I mean, what he can do is wait until the the if if that that aspect of the law is not going to be entrenched, wait until the, the process go through. Don't start making noise. I mean, we've seen all the reports in the newspapers, in the standard newspapers, it was serialized. And all they were talking about, the cabinet is not happy with this. The cabinet is not happy with that. And it's all about the presidency. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that, that's and, what the MP said, yeah. No, and, and, and what allows me, Kejau, is that there were other areas which they could have dealt on, which affected them individually, but they never, you never had the cabinet was unhappy with this. Mm. I'll give you one example. The issue about secularity is quite, is quite controversial, mm. but I have never heard yeah. any of the people there saying, and I'm saying this, the Christian MPs, you've never heard them say, oh, we're not happy with secularity in the constitution. But what you're saying is cabinet is not happy with this cabinet is not happy. And it's all about the presidency. Yeah, yeah. So what they were trying to do in many respects is to try to have uh, an elective dictatorship by coming up with so much, so much amendments and proposals. Yeah, I think the problem, the big problem is that, you know, I think the, the uh, uh, we have, we have, Barbaro should understand that he is between the the devil and the deep blue sea, you know, because even if he, even if they, they voted, uh, they vote no um, to this to this constitution, and then we go back to the 1997 constitution, you know, I don't think he has a chance that, um, you know, uh, it's going to be forced past the post. I mean, uh, that, that one is forced past the post. Only the simple, simple majority would have would, would, would win the, 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 the elections. Well, I think, I yeah. think the whole, the whole position is that nobody should be, should be complacent and nobody should be arrogant about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we all saw how Yaya Jame thought he was going to win the elections and the people punished him. Exactly. exactly. And there is no need for thinking that, oh, if this, if it doesn't work with we'll that constitution, be careful what you pray for. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is, um, it's about principle, is the, is the principle of it. The fact that we, he got elected, he said constitutional review, he starts saying about the reforms. The international organizations came to his rescue, gave gave this government a lot of money that they've used towards having a constitutional review commission. And now at the 11th hour, all the work that they've done in the constitutional review, somebody is saying, someone or some group of MPs are saying, oh, it doesn't protect our our interests. I think the problem is that. Um... You know, when when uh, when I think what I understand from from all these things is is because uh, Baro is thinking that the, the, the people who sponsor who will sponsor him for 2021 will not even put their money, you know, on the table when he they know that he cannot go for a third time. You know, I think that's where the problem lies. Because well, I mean, that's interesting. That's something new news to me. But I mean, the problem is, I mean, this is somebody who said that he was going to stay only for three times three years. Yeah, yeah. And this is a man that was said that um, mm -hmm. in Wolof. Yeah. And now from three years, no, I'm going for five years because I've got I've got to uh, I've got to complete my reform program. And then now this man is now saying, oh no, I don't want reform program. I want to continue 
and I don't want, I want it to be 15 years. I mean, for God's sake, we are fed up with all this so-called bickering about term limits. You've been there for two terms. That's it, irrespective whether it was the 1997 constitution or the 2022. Yeah. You've done 10 years, that's it. I should be, but, yeah. but the problem is, who knows whether you'll win next election? Yeah, That's and, the and I think these people did us a very big favor because we have seen uh, places like Ivory Coast and even Senegal uh, with Ablai Wada when, when he said, okay, um, I have to go for the third time, third time, you know, and, and, and people came out on the street. So I think this constitutional uh, review committee did us a very huge favor by spelling it out right out there and then that, um, you know, we don't, we, we, we are saying that the first time, first time is going to count as the first time, close it, close it. you know, otherwise it's going to be a lot of problems, yes. you know, it's going to be, otherwise it would have been a lot of problems, you know, when we have, when we have, when they have, they, when everything, they, they could have mooted on this point, and then we go, um, God forbid, but all wins first time, and the second time, you know, he's saying, okay, I have to go for a third time, and then we will come out to the street. You know, I think that was going to be a big problem. But then um, in hindsight, it would have even been better that, that, that they go mute on that because we are sure that uh, whatever happens, people our people will vote borrow out. And, uh, you know, um, I, I think uh, it would be a, a golden opportunity then to reintroduce this, 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 uh, this, uh, this, um, this, this draft constitution again. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw it away into the bin. What I would but do is um, shelf it. I even if they vote no, you know, shelve it for now, you know, and 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 then the next the next uh, 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 you know uh, 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 next year or, or after twenty twenty two they can bring it back in. What do you think? <laughs> well, I mean, but you, how can you bring it back in now? Because you've already thrown the bill. You already thrown the bill. Are you saying that we're going to put it in the archives and then when yeah, Halifa we'll Salah or Usain Odabo wins the elections, we come and say, okay, where is that draft constitution that we had? Okay, that's it. We're going to put it to the people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a sort of legal, there's, there's, there's going to be some legal adjustments on it because what happened is you have to put a referendum bill. And what should be focusing here is focus on the on the referendum bill mm -hmm. and let it go through. And if you're not happy with it, campaign against it. Yeah, yeah. But don't deny the people the last bite of the cherry. Yeah. They've worked so hard, educated on uneducated. They've, They've done this. They've gone village to village, town to town, street to street, spoken to so many people. Yeah. And they've, they've been so involved giving their views. And then now when it comes for it to go through so that they can vote on it, you say, okay, we are going to play a trick now. We're going to make it difficult for it for it to go over. That's quite dishonest on my on, on their side, definitely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh um, I think the last point I want to talk or touched on on this issue is that um, you know I, I don't think I think as as Uncle Usain Odabo said this is just the first hurdle and as you also said you know um, we have also have a seventy is it seventy five percent of yes. the of the of the votes to 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 pass it I think that is too onerous I mean I think it's too it's too much a burden you know um, when Yajame was changing the nineteen seventy constitution we didn't have to go through all this. You know, it wasn't. I don't think the, the, the bar was this high. Um, but I think, I think the vote was 80% voted for it. Yeah, 80%. 80, okay. 80% okay. voted for it. And I can remember, it did, I wasn't in favor of that constitution. Yeah. But anything that would make sure that we return to civilian rule, I would go for it. Yeah, but it, I think it's better than the 1970 constitution, to be fair. The 1970 or 1997? The 1997 constitution is better than the 1970 constitution. Well, you see, what you fail to understand is that constitution is evolving. In America, it's still stuck to where it is for good reasons, because they've got other laws that they can rely on, yeah. you know, like state laws, federal laws. But in, in constitutional law, it's evolving. Mm -hmm. Because what you fail to realize is that when we had the 1970 constitution, there was no such thing that people talked about the economic and social rights mm -hmm. that you find now in constitutions. Yeah, you never talked about the independent electoral commission. It wasn't something that was common in those days. But laws have evolved, systems have changed, 
the jurisprudence have improved. So what that's why I say the 1970 constitution was a near colonial one, because things changed. Because in those days, elections were conducted by the supervisor of elections, who is the local government. And that was what happened throughout West African countries. We never had two terms. Gambia talked about two terms in 1986. Yeah. We never talked about, no one talked about it because it wasn't part of our jurisprudence. Yeah. Now we talk about it. Things have moved on. We're talking about ombudsman. We never used to have ombudsman in the 70s because that was not part of the issue. We're a young country. We're just straight from independence. We're just trying to go through the basic areas of institutional reforms. And that's what happened. Yeah. And now 1997, after the Cold War, countries like South Africa coming out, other countries coming up with two terms, like Nigeria had two terms in the 1979 constitution. Mm -hmm. That's when they started having two terms. Yeah, even Senegal, even Senegal. Yeah, two, yeah, two, two, yeah. Terms, two terms. Senegal was 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 there for a long time, and then they start. So the two term phenomenon started late in the 70s and came to Gambia in the 80s. Yeah, in, in, so, in Senegal, they, they did it in the 2000s as well. Why? Yes, so apart from that, you used to have like the Guardian Council of 1992. Mm -hmm. That's when they start talking about two terms. Yeah. Sierra Leone won the same thing. But now the trend now is, is in the whole of West Africa, or even Africa, the trend is two terms. You know, I mean, everywhere almost, everywhere the constitutions have changed and people are going for two terms. People who are lucky to have a new constitution and sign it there, those who haven't, had that luck, uh, but but to move on, um, I think one important thing is I think the new constitution has favored has greatly favored the diaspora, and 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 for 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 I think the um, the, the the MPs are trying to um, uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, how what's the what's the how did the world the world say it again um, you know uh, ate ate nyaka <laughs> well you know because. Um, you know, right now we have a, uh, when, when, when we, the 19, 1997 constitution means you, most of us, I mean, most of dual, those with dual citizens cannot be, um, you know, apart from MP, you cannot even be a minister rightly. You know, you cannot be a vice president. You cannot be, uh, no, I mean, even in this nine, in this constitution, you cannot be a right or vice president, but then you cannot be a minister. You, and even the, the residency part is so onerous for MPs. You know, I mean, so many things you cannot be, but this constitution has moved on. It hasn't given us a full, you know, right. I mean, it hasn't given dual citizens full right um, to be president, to be vice president, um, or even, um, yeah, I think those are the two terms that, that, that you know, any, any succession that will leave you the presidency and even the chief of defense staff, you cannot be a, a, a dual citizen. Apart from those things, I think it's, it's, it's done a great job for, for the diaspora. You know, you, do you think these people are just trying to add in Nyaka or what? Well, I mean, the problem is we are not asking any favors from, from this government. Yeah. And, 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 and we, what, we, what we are part of the seventh estate. Mm. We contribute a lot to this country. When you have any go for me, any organ, um, char charitable events, it's the diasporas that contribute. We contribute a lot to limitances in that country. So we are not asking them any favor. And secondly, it's our birthright. Some of them, it's, it's their birthright. They have to, they're still linked up with their birthright. So you can't deny them that place. I mean, when Adam Abaro, when things got rough for Adam Abaro, he came to England, hustled here and went back. He must have been linked here with Gambians. And those people must be still supporting him for, in, whatever, in whatever capacity. I mean, no political party can function effectively without the support of the diaspora. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it. And it is, it is time for people to think that we are not asking for favors. It's our right. And that is where I do not agree with these people thinking that, oh, yes, the, the diaspora. For God's sake, we contribute to the country. Yeah, especially this, I mean, especially this, this government, this coalition yes. building, you know, we almost, you can say we initiated it and then pushed them to the ground. So that no, they, I mean, yeah. it, 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 it's unfortunate that we have to even boast about what we did yeah, yeah. it's unfortunate that we even had to we do we never it shouldn't have been an issue mm -hmm. it's just common sense yeah. because when things were rough it was people in diaspora that stood up Absolutely. against all or sacrificed their jobs sacrifice some people have sacrificed a lot yeah, yeah. and just to make this thing work yeah, yeah. and it's not only in 
in Gambia, in South Africa, mm -hmm. diasporans contributed. In Nigeria, diasporans contributed. So it's a, it's a similar trend that keeps going. Absolutely. So you cannot take diasporans out of it and thinking that you're doing them a favor or you, you, you don't owe them a favor. It's their, it's their right. Absolutely. Yeah. So um. Yeah. Okay. So we have um. We have spent so much time on this one, and we have to take a break. So I think we can move on. I I hope the MPs will do the right thing, and uh, and, and I hope and pray that um, they will not have a coalition against the UDP members of Parliament because the UDP members of Parliament have done a great job. They are the ones who stood up, and I hope it will not be like the uh, for the, is it the Mr Sonko uh, saga whereby um you know Doi will will join up with. Uh, with with uh, with, uh, with with NRP and, and and the brown envelope MPs to vote against this constitution. I hope they will they will do the right thing. And we have seen so many of them talk about you know uh, citizenship you know when it comes to play. But I hope they will do the right thing. So my next point. Um, hey Joe, before you go, okay. this 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 constitutional review issue is has nothing. It should not be de determined on partisan basis. Absolutely. It should be determined on the national interest. And they will not like to say, but the stance that UDP has taken is the national interest against an individual's interest. Yeah. So that's the test. Tomorrow, what this MP should be thinking about is that UDP have taken the national interest. UDP and other parties will take the national interest. For the others will take the individual's interest. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and and we have to commend our MPs for for that. Yes, yes, yeah. So um, commend all the MPs, those in the other parties that are going to take the national interest. Yeah, yeah. I I'm I'm, I'm even I'm, I'm I was told that GDC would even some some of the GDC MPs would not even uh, vote for it. So <laughs> well, I mean, I, I I'll wait and see. Let's hope that they take the national interest, which UDP is going to support. Yeah, somehow I think every I think all the MPs will vote for it. I think even the the Larikunda MP that was talking about, no, I'm not going to vote for it. I think he's just posturing so that Baro will give him a bigger envelope next time. I, well, I, I mean, the problem is, is this. It's a matter of conscience. You see, when I look at the amendment, the imminent in the Indemnity Amendment, amendment Act, 2002, there's still some people that I don't have hold high in high esteem because what happened is they voted for that law to come into effect and they indemnified criminals yeah, yeah. so what we are telling them now is that although it's not it's not a crime at the moment but to deny the people is so they betrayed the people mm -hmm. and they will pay the cost for it absolutely absolutely yes yeah and, and mr as mr as, as mr hussein that was said um they will go into the annals of history as, as the people who denied their, their 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 grandchildren and their children the right to say oh our grand our granddad this this so um yeah moving on to um insults i think that's that's one of the important point that we need to talk about here today our people want to know uh, because last time we saw paro government um, led by the the, 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 the last um, Attorney General, Mr. Tambedu, he came before the parliament to say that he is going to put forward a bill that is going to make sure that the people, that, that is going to make sure the president, the vice president, and the, um, the, the I don't know, some member of parliament, uh, any insult against their parents will be criminal. Um, and, and, and so many people came out to say, no, you can't do that. You have to, some of us like me, I came out and said, you know, you cannot do that. You have to make it a criminal offense for everyone in the country. You know, as long as it's not, um, you know, it's not Cal, it's not Sanawiya, you know, you cannot insult anybody's mother. And, and, and we have seen in so many countries, like, you know, even, even democracies like Sweden, so many, so many countries where they, they make um, um, insulting another person's parent a criminal offense. You know, they call it different terms, but, but it all comes to insults. You cannot just sit down and insult someone and and because it creates so much problem and 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 the, the fact that our 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 country is a religious country and and you know it's it's, it's it's christians and muslims and we are very passionate about our mothers our parents you know if you call, if you insult someone's parent you know it, it you know it, it 
you know so um i think what we have to uh, what we have to realize is that uh, we we will hope but our government will bring those bills again but this time it will cover everyone because you remember you know what happened last last night was that um i understand there was a lady uh, an, an npp supporter who went on social media insulting um the the uh, uncle Hussein that was parents and his reason for her reason for doing them doing those things was that um uh, she said she said the udp people were ins have been insulting her and the only way she can she can the only person who who he can insult is is Dabo because they were insulting her because of Dabo, and and she, she, she threw a very very nasty insults. I understand. I haven't had them, um, thank God. Uh, but uh, I understand they're not really really nice ones. And then um, and I understand from the social media that um, the police, you know, I think the 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 uh, uh, Uncle Usain Dabo's pay, uh, uh, family children took the complaint to the police. And, and what they did was they they called Dabo and said, listen, there's a complaint about this lady here. Can you come to the police station and we talk about this? And he came and he said, can you can you play the audio for me? And when they played the audio, he understood that, um, you know, the insult was that. So they told him, I think that was a serious crime unit. And they told him, can you go to um, Kairaba station so that you can, you can take, you can, they can take your statement there and the complaint. Um, I think when he went to Kairaba, he, he found that the, the station officer or the person in charge had closed for the day and they told him to come back the next day. Um, and, and he had he had talked to uh, the, the, the children and he talked to UDP people around there to say, this is not your fight. This is, this is between my family because it's not insulting UDP. And then um, he went to the police station and, and, and they took his statement. And he, I think what he advised the police was that, you know, um, Kindly, kindly call this lady and talk to her, you know, tell her that she has no right to insult other people. This is going to cause problems. And I don't want any problem to be caused because of me in this country. You know, uh, just talk to her so that she can refrain from it. Next time she should not be able, she should not do this again. I understand from the number of videos, uh, audios that I listen to. Um, but then um, uh, my old friend, uh, uh, Alkali Conte, I understand he took the truck load of, of, of paramilitary from State House and, and from his own video or audio, because I had him speaking. What I understood was that um, he said Baro told him to come to the police station because one of his supporters has been has been uh, arrested by the police uh, for insulting uh, uh, Luciano Dabo and that um, you know he should intervene so that they leave the person uh, because nobody has any right. No opposition should control the police, um, you know. And he was talking to the IGP on the phone. IGP just kept saying, "Yes, sir, yes, sir." And and and, and some people came, like Mr. Diva, Ibrahim Diva came, and he was really, really angry that um, this is going to this may cause problems when 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 um, this guy, what's he called again, um, uh, Alkali goes to interfere with the police investigation, and he's saying that. You know, it, it is the, the opposition that is interfering, um, and that 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 you know, accusation was that he's trying. They're trying to bring dictatorship in. What do you think that we can do about this? And and you know, what what will you advise UDP supporters to to? to... Well, uh, um, I have ever since tried to ask my compatriots to refrain from profanity, refrain from insults, because it's not a healthy thing to embark on. I mean, it's a sign of irresponsibility because some of those people that are trading insults have families, have kids that listen to them on social media. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing such things, then you are not showing a bright example. Yeah. It's only an irresponsible person that will indulge in such childish behavior. Absolutely. And uh, it, 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 it bogs on to all parties. I mean, Halifa Salah said it, that if you want to, our party, if you if you if you want to bring insults, don't leave our party. Mm -hmm. The same things apply to UDP. Yeah, we that do not, it, We do not intend. We we do not tolerate insults. And when you insult anybody, you do not. You are not speaking the language of UDP. Mm -hmm. We are not. Um, and I think that should be something which should be expressed across the board, so that people understand that when you insult, you do not speak the UDP language. You speak your own language, which is not helpful. 
Now, some of these things, if we do not mind, can bring some parties into disrepute. Yeah. And it is time that we look on the game for whereby we sit down all political parties. And because when we have the elections in December, going to the elections is going to be a very intense campaign. Yeah. And if we do not try to settle certain issues now, have some sort of understanding and some, 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 some sort of a, a civilized way of doing our campaigns, it's going to have adverse impact when we have our campaigns. So this is this is an opportunity for all political parties now to sit down and look at the ethics of campaign, ethics of politicking. But however, we cannot control people that have WhatsApp accounts. Mm. Keja, the days when we had Gambia L, Gambia Post, there's certain things you can say and things you can't say because it was censored. Yeah, but even then we had so many insults, man. <laughs> yeah, you have insults, but it wasn't as crude as it is now. Yeah, what's up, yeah. But now what you have is people that will just go and have WhatsApp groups and keep on insulting people. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, I do not subscribe to that because I find that very childish. Mm -hmm. And it's time for people to realize that we are in the 21st century. We want to be part of the new Gambia. We have to play our game much more advanced and mature mm -hmm. on behavior. So I think um, one way we can resolve it is try to look at having a, a legislation. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's interesting. You all remember when the, M the former MP of Banyu Central mm -hmm. said something very nasty about a particular ethnic group. Mm -hmm. And people, some people kept quiet. And then when somebody else started saying this, oh, you shouldn't say this. Now, you cannot tell me that that's a responsible person should be making such statements. Absolutely. I mean, it's time for us to bury that hatchet and stop the insults. Now, if it means National Council of Civic Education to get involved in educating people about what it means, how to be, how to be a good citizen and how, what, what is not required and what is required, then so be it. But it's becoming yes. something toxic at the moment. And if we do not put our, our feet down and start tackling the situation, there is a possibility that this will be in the rampant when we have our campaigns. Okay. And, the, and the consequences, I cannot predict on the consequences. Yeah. And some people are saying that, um, you know, the incumbent is trying to cause problems because he should have come out and say, and disassociate himself with the, with the, with the, with the, with the supporter, you know, insulting supporter, just like, as you said, um, you know, uh, Uncle Hussein Dabo said about about UDP members insulting, and he, and 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 and, and Doris Halifa had said. So we, we 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 think the president, you know, if he is going to if he's not going to bring another bill, you know, to 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 criminalize insult, he should disassociate himself from 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 such people. Well, instead of, sending, instead of sending Al Khali, his advisor, who people are saying has three portfolios in government. That to, 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 to talk to the police and intimidate them? Well, I mean, as I said, this is an issue where President Barrow may use it saying that he's got so much things to do and he's, 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 he's delegated that role to President um, Al-Khali Conte. But I don't think Al-Khali Conte was the appropriate person to, to put in that case. He could have sat down and said, look, let's sit down. What? What I don't understand about President Barrow is that he has the opportunity to control this country from civil strife. By you're sitting, bringing all opposition parties together, sit down with them, say, look, this is what is happening. How do we address this issue? And I'll tell you something, he will gain a lot of respect from people. But just ignoring it because you're gaining points out of it, it's not a wise move. It will backfire. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is what I've been saying. You know, you, you see situations where insults, insults have been in politics for years, since the 60s. Yeah. But it's reached a stage whereby you have some people, uncultured people that are coming up into the game, don't understand what, why we have WhatsApp, don't think that, you know, let's come, oh, start insulting someone for no reason. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this across the country. It can come from UDP, it can come from any other political party, just because of politics. 
for God's sake, politics is not worth it. No, no, no. no. To insult someone's parent, that is quite crude. Yeah, it is very crude. And I think uh, we, you know, the least we can do is criminalize it. We have to put pressure on the government. To well, yes, the problem is you criminalize it. Yes, you criminalize it. But how are you going to enforce it when you have these tapes and all that stuff? You know, I mean, you say it's not me. I mean, there's a lot to do on it. Yeah, I mean, we can engage in civil education, but um, you know, if you if you if you send a tip, it's easy in 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 in, in, in cyber 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 crime to know where the where the which whose number it, it originated from. I mean, that's that's easy like that, and I don't think that's an, that's an issue here. Um, the issue is that um, you know the police are saying our hands are tied. You know, we don't have any law that is that is that that is criminalizing. The only thing they can well, do it, it, it can it it can come under the. the the limit of breach of the peace. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. so you can say it comes to breach of the peace. I mean, because I've seen, and then what happened is you you could although breach of the peace doesn't mean that you will get a custodial sentence. You could be fined for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it's the long term of how you're going to enforce it, and just insults are not acceptable. Are are irresponsible actions which should be discouraged. Absolutely, absolutely. I will not be. I will not participate in any WhatsApp group where I know that there is going to be insults. No, no, no. no. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even with even with, without you know outside politics, people are insulting each other. So <laughs> it is. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's a very bad culture that we have to move away from, and and it's very unfortunate that um, this incident has come to a point whereby it could it could bring. Um, some people are saying the president wants to bring chaos. That's what that's what the audio is saying that he wants to bring chaos because he knows he's going to lose 2021 so he doesn't care anymore you know he wants to make sure that um, he turns the country upside down so i think um it's, it's up to we have to talk to our udp uh, members as well because if 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 at all um you know they didn't they didn't some of us i think this has come to a point where they couldn't hide it but i think sometimes we have to ignore these insults you know it's really really hard you know, I think uh, to be frank, we have to have a very hard, uh, hard, thick skin. hard yeah, thick skin. That's right. You know, so that um, you know, if people insult you, uh, you know, occasionally you have to move on. You know, and 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 if somebody insults you, me, I, I have seen some people insulting me. You know, but what I do is, you know, I, I don't listen to you again. If I know that you know you had insulted me before, and I wouldn't have any apology from you. You know, next time I will I will try to move away. I will never make sure I will make sure I don't listen to your insults again. You know, I think those are those are things that we have to do. And as mature people, we have to move away from insulting because, you know, if someone is insulting, it means he doesn't have anything else to say. You know, and that's really really important that you know anybody any group where people are, we have to condemn insults, even though it's not directed against you, you know, or or, or, or it's directed against someone that you don't even like. We as a people, we have a responsibility, you know, uh, in our religion, in our culture, to make sure we all condemn insults, you know, uh, and, and I think that's what is lacking, uh, you know, until that comes up, it's going to be a big problem, it's going to be a big challenge. Um, so, um, yeah, so we'll move on to uh, our next, um, so the police have a case and, and I'm going to advise them to, to go and, and go after this uh, lady and make sure that it doesn't bring disrepute into our country. It doesn't bring problems into our country. It doesn't bring public order issues into our problem, into, into our place. You know, we're gonna talk and try and talk to even um, uh, uh, Al Kali Conte because we used to be in Codec together <laughs> when we had this relationship. <laughs> you know, so you know, so before he left and you know, unceremoniously and wanted to take everybody along, and I told him no. Well, Ibrahim Adiba and I told him, no, you can go. We are not going with you. <laughs> you know, so so we're going to talk to him and think and, and tell him that these police are doing their job. You're the one who's interfering. You shouldn't do this, you know, because they have all rights to caution this lady. You know, they have all rights to bring her in because because the, the, the family of Dabo can get up and go and, and, and beat her up, you know. And so that's where the problem will be, or even the supporters of UDP supporters. You know, um, so so that's where the problem will be, and and the police has the duty to make sure they prevent that. You know, um, you know, on on on, on that the laws that they have, so their hands are not tied, and he cannot come in and, and tell them that you know he himself has been insulted so many times, 
So, you know, they don't have any rights to, I mean, I think that's so irresponsible and we have a, we have a duty to talk to him and, 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 and see if his old telephone number is working. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Um, the next important, uh, uh, I mean, the next uh, burning issue in, in, in social media and in our country is, 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 uh, is maternal death. You know, we have seen so many people died, you know, in, in, during, immediately, immediately, you know, around this time because of probably due to COVID-19 uh, related deaths, but also uh, as part of, 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 of giving birth, you know, and, and, and some of us, we analyzed, we, we understand, I talked to so many medical personnel uh, and, and researchers and scientists, Gambians, and, and, and I understand that um, the problem is that um, the government had gone to close some, some antenatal clinics and, and these are very important um, for, for, uh, for, 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 for to, to, to make sure that we cope with the, the rate of, 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 of a woman dying. And, and you have seen the trend in social media. Everybody is, 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 is putting a tag. You know, today the constitution is taking over, but last, you know, last few days, it is like Gambian women's lives matter, you know, because they cannot understand when we have so many people coming out dying just before, because they're giving birth. You know, and, and, and some of us have been saying a long number of times when they close Fadi Kunda and they close the main Banjul antenatal clinic, we have been telling them you cannot do that, you know, just because you have you have COVID infections, you should clean the place up and 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 and, and put some important measures in place when you cannot close up hospitals. We have seen in UK where we have almost almost 40 or 44,000 deaths, you know, where they instead of closing hospitals. They are opening more, you know, they are using private hospitals, they, they are using emergencies. And, and, and I think some of them told me that, you know, the problem is that um, going to these private clinics is not even helping because the private clinics don't have facilities, they don't have the, the required expertise and even the, um, the, 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 how do you call it again, the, the machinery to, to take care of these issues. And people just go there just for, for um, you know, for prestige. And, and I think it's one of the, the hottest business in town now. Um, so the point, the issue is, I think the management, the gov how the government manage the COVID is what the problem, this is causing the problem. You know, we need to invest in, in, in our, our healthcare. Uh, and, and I understand Baro was saying that um, he's going to introduce insurance, um, you know, so that everybody will have to pay whether you are sick or not. You know, I think that is going to be very difficult to, 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 to implement. And I urge the government, uh, the, the next government coming, UDP government, to, to levy some extra tax in onto, um, onto our, 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 our workers, just like that's not insurance. The same way we do it here in UK, you know, whereby if you pay tax, you pay a little bit part for national insurance. And that national insurance can be used specifically to put it into tax. I understand what the, the budget that the government is giving to for our health service is so small. It's less than the, the, the recommended uh, level for, for by, by the United Nations, you know. So, um, you know, these are issues and I think the UDP government will do a better job than, than this government or any other government that has come to pass. And, and the important point we should, we should emphasize is we have to invest in our hospitals you know, COVID-19 has shown us that, you know, um, we should stop using Dakar. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot rely on taking our, 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 our women outside the country to, to seek for, for, for help. And the ministers and the MPs and the, and the people, the, the, the elites, if you like, you know, cannot escape, uh, uh, you know, with the whole family, the whole extended family, we cannot take them outside the country for treatment. So we have a duty to invest in our in our national health, you know. And, and one way we can do it is is by putting aside national insurance so that the people, you know, people who are paying who are paying tax will will be will be deducted some some money even if it is going to be taken away from the main tax so that that can be specifically targeted and and giving to the health sector because if you go to Banjul, I was listening to um, uh, what's it called again Wada Diba. Uh, this is Divawada, uh, uh, the lady uh, uh, on, on this channel last week, last weekend, last Sunday. And, 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 and some, some other people, they're saying, if you go into, into um, RVH, you know, you will be surprised how dirty it is. You know, a private clinic, a, the private wards 
uh, it, it is it is leaking. The toilets are leaking. It is so bad. You know, we have so much rampant corruption in the country, but this is such a problem that uh, we have to tackle. What do you think, Mr. Goswell, the, the UDP government can do to, to, to make sure that, um, you know, uh, our women's life matter? Right, women's life matter. Yeah. Quite an interesting slogan and something which I looked at it and I say yes. Well, you see, Keja, it boils down to something that people don't want to talk about, is that in the next three months, somebody will go to parliament and present the appropriation bill for the next year and they will give us the estimates. And when you look at the estimates, you will see that a significant portion is being spent on security. Yeah. At the, at the detriment of health, education, agriculture. Yeah. I think the, that's the first thing we need to look at. Prior, know where what our priorities are yeah. in this country. For far too long, we are not spending or investing wisely into the health sector. Yeah. And this is this this is the reason. When you go, you you I'll give you an example. Um the minister of the minister of interior during Barrow's force meeting. He was bragging about water cannons, that they've got water cannons and all that stuff. He wasn't bragging about we had a dialysis machine or we've got all these things, but water cannons to, to spray people that have gone on riots. We are spending too much money on things which are not, are not um, priority. We spend so much on the security. We're going through the security reforms and we still haven't seen what they've done. Absolutely. Now that money, if we look at our budget properly and say we will spend, make a pledge. UDP should make a pledge that they will invest a certain amount of money into the health service. Mm -hmm. UDP should come up and say, we will set up a national health service. I am not saying a copy a carbon copy of the United Kingdom. We can't do that one because that one is 70 years older than us. But we can have something. Yeah, but they started it somewhere. I mean, they did yes, it somewhere. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and what we have now is that the the, the medical service is, is not something to be proud of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are people are going to Dakar for treatment. Yeah. Well. When I was young, I rarely heard about people going to Dakar. Well, people were coming from Dakar then to buy. Yes, <laughs> because and we had and then how many hospitals we had? Yeah, one or two. One or two. Yeah. Now we've got so many hospitals, and still we cannot cure people. Yeah, I think we that's have the problem lies. You know, we we just building concrete blocks. No, we yeah. have so many trained doctors, and we still cannot cure people. And people have to go. And now what the reason, the reason I look at is that we haven't done our investment wisely. No, no. We're spending so much money on the electric on on things which are not necessary. You're going on a trip to a UN trip, you go with 20 people, mm -hmm. you said it's a part of your delegation, each of them will get two hundred dollars or two hundred pounds a day per diem. All that money could have been put towards our medical sector. It's time for us to look at it and say, look, we are a poor country. We will spend wisely. We will be prudent with our finance. We will ensure physical dis physical discipline. That's, not, that, that's the way forward. Then we can invest in agriculture, invest in education, and invest in health. These are three aspects where we have failed the Gambian people. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, as you said, it comes to controlling the resources. Yes. The amount of tax we collect is so much and it should be a lot more than we are collecting now. You know, so I think, you know, the next topic we want to talk about is digitalizing our, our payment systems, you know, making sure that we control the wastage. Uh, I understand when Sane was the Minister of Finance, one of the discipline things that he did was controlling the vehicles. Um, you know, as you said, when people are going to the UN, they take along uh, a delegation of 50 people. You say in 20, they take 50 people. And, and, and they don't pay them 200, 200 is for, is for the, the Nares, 
you know, when the permanent secretaries ops are going, it's 250 or 300 pounds per day. You know, and they go and spend a week or two weeks there. People like um, Khalil Hamad Pa, I understand he can spend one month, you know, and even, even the uh, vice president and even Tambedu, those people, they used to spend a month away. You know, so these are all vestiges. We have so much vestige in our country because, well, you know, so much waste, so much waste. Even people in places like here where they give us money so that we can sustain our, our economy, uh, you know, they don't have that much vestige. You know, we have few people exploiting everything in our country, you know, exploiting everything. You know, very few people in, in the high positions and, and they want the one situation to continue like that. It is cannot, it's not sustainable. When Sane came, the first thing he did was to make sure that he put it forward uh, a proposal that was accepted in the parliament. And before it went before the, the second, first, second reading, Paul withdrew the plug when Sane was away on 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 another on on on, on a mission. So it's so unfortunate that we cannot have discipline. That would have saved us so much money, you know, because we have even as you said, the security is taking so much money from our, 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 our resources. We have so many generals, for instance. We have so many colonels, much more than, 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 um, than, than lieutenants and, and, and captains. And as they say in the armed forces, we have a major problem. It means we have major, more majors than their juniors. And the army never works like that. The higher you go, the, the, the smaller the, it's supposed to be. You know, but in our country, it doesn't, doesn't look like that. The higher you go, the more people you get. Because of that, you know, um, um, I mean, uh, because of Yaya uh, Jammes insecurity. So, so and, and can you believe even all those people, anybody major upwards, what they get is they get, if I think captain or major upwards, they get government vehicles to bring to them, you know, and, and they get fuels. We have seen the last CDS, Kinte, he was, he was retired and he's saying that, can I keep my three vehicles for my wives and my children before I go on this mission? I mean, can you believe it when our hospitals don't have vehicles to take them to, to, to take the passengers, I mean, to patients in? I think these are scandalous things. And this is the discipline that we, we need. We need the UDP government to bring in. We have to close our eyes and make sure we close all this wastage that is happening in our country. You know, because we have so much wastage, man. We have so much. It is unbelievable. The richest people in our country are, are, are custom officers. You know, can you believe this? In, in, a, in a nation like the United Kingdom, can you believe when people tell you if you want to be rich, go on and join, join customs? These are things that everybody's looking at and nobody's talking about them. So maybe maybe our, 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 our policy maker up in, in UDP may not even want to talk about these things. But you and I can talk about these issues and, and, and talk and, and, and find ways to solve this because this is not sustainable. This is why we have such a poor country because we have so much wastage. We have so much corruption in our country. You go and take a container. What they tell you is it's going to cost you three hundred thousand dollars. That is it. But give us two hundred thousand, and we're going to be. Uh, but we're not going to give you receipts. And it's and 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 and, you, and and they put it in the system so that you can go because we have a network where everybody gets their cut. So they're getting more money than the one the government is going into the government coffers, and this has to stop. You know, and it's everybody's responsibility, especially the UDP government, to make sure that we digitalize these things. If you want to send a container, just like here, you make sure you, you put it, the inventory in, you send it beforehand. You know, or the inventory that you send here, we're going to make sure we get that inventory. You know, I think even here, I will try to put that place in place, but it failed because the people will sabotage you. We need to digitalize this thing. When you digitalize it, there's nothing, there's no way it can fail. You know, because if you're going to pay tax, you make sure you pay tax through the digital system. Don't go through anybody. And the, because you cannot buy a computer, the computer will not tell you, give me 200 and I'm not going to give you a receipt. It has to make sure you put 200 check in and, and it clears. Or it clears. Otherwise, you're not going to get, you're not going to get your clearance. And anybody who will come and look at the trail and, and ensure that it happens. And even those, we have to put so many checks and balances in place. You know, we have a nation to build. We have so much problems in our country. You know, security is in shambles and we are paying so much money for it. You know, I think this is scandalous. This is, this has to stop. You are, we have to do something about this. You know, I don't know what your take about on, 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 on this all corruption. Well, the first, my first take on it is that 
I also blame, blame the Brighton Woods organizations that normally come here and tell us that we're doing very well in our economy. Yeah. And we're just being, we're doing very well. And then we get another more financial assistance. And that makes us being so complacent and we do not do, we do not comply with the regular guidelines. Yeah. Every time when we're in, we're in trouble, IMF comes in to our rescue and gives us money. And we, and what they, they give us this nice report saying, oh, we're doing very well in the economy. There is but what, what some, lastly, but I understand from this last rules there, what they are telling people is that the Gambia government shouldn't be borrowing anything because yes. you know, what you pay for the loans is too much. Well, I mean, they had debt relief and all that stuff. And now that Gambia was in the good books because a tyrant has already been, was already out of office. We had the goodwill. Let us talk about it. We, we never to, to talk about it. We had the goodwill. I don't think any government has had such goodwill yeah, yeah. from donors before. I mean, the so closest one. They, 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 they just boom by the whole money. And, and this, and this, 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 I am not going to absolve UDP because we were in, in there and we should have done something. I think they did something. This yes, something but the problem is, I will think for this program, I will come here and think that all because the, the systems that we are inherited from the APRC should have been a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. What we did was we started bringing APRC economists, people that have been there, and they're using repeating the same outdated, unlawful ways of dealing with our economy. Yeah. They haven't changed. So what you have is the same economic um, irregularities that we're going to. And as a result, we we as taxpayers in any form are suffering. We gave everybody pay rise, but it did not mean anything. 50% pay rise was given to civil servants, but it did not mean anything. Because in the end, the prices went up. There was inflation. Mm -hmm. And you talk about systems and all that stuff, this, the same system is there. People are telling me that it's even worse now. now yeah, corruption, corruption now, people are I'm not paid told that it's even worse now. Mm -hmm. Corruption is worse. What, what, you, what people are saying that during, during the, the Second Republic, there was somebody who was known to be corrupt and he was the only person he would do what he liked. But now it's something that has gone across the board. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to believe that. I don't want to take that as gospel truth, but people have to convince me that we are not corrupt. Absolutely. The system that we have in that country is, I mean, I look, you gave me the case of King Tay. That, that may not be corruption, but that may be greed. Yeah, I mean, it's greed, but the system... The problem, is, the problem is, why should, just because you were, what security do you need? Exactly. Well, I mean, even the vehicles, even, you know, we have to have a system. Three vehicles, why? Yeah. And this is what I don't understand. It's something something that was going on when they had on the Jame and they have never changed it yeah. because they wanted to be in the good books of the army and say, you know what? He is our CDS. We have to make sure that he gets everything so that he will not topple us. So that's how they do all these things. Oh, make sure he gets everything and make sure he gets more. So that he's not he's not bribed, he doesn't get involved in something that could be so basic to the nation. That's how they're doing it. But 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 I'm just giving the CDS as an example. I mean, even the permanent secretaries, if you ask them, some of, most of them have yeah, and the ministers, most of them have two or three vehicles at home. Well, they should. Well, the problem is they shouldn't. Yeah, they shouldn't because the the problem is they shouldn't. You're given a vehicle to go to work. Yeah, and when you come back from work. You can use your private vehicle. Absolutely, absolutely. You are not made. You are not giving spouse allowance, so your wife should your, your, your family allowance. So your spouse and your family, which is your, your children, should not be given a government vehicle. Absolutely. I mean, that is you you are paid. They are not paid. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can understand the president's case could be a bit uh, a remote chance and all that stuff, but. Others like Cabinet Ministers, Palm Sex, I think that is really, really not responsible. No, no, no. And I think we have to be realistic. We are a poor country. Yeah. 
You know, you, you, I don't know whether you remember when Princess Anne came to this country and they tried to put her in one of these most expensive cars. Mm -hmm. She was not impressed with it. That was in 1980, 82, 84, 85. She wasn't impressed with it because we are a poor country. When Prince Charles came, we wanted to, we had red carpet everywhere. I mean, that's a lot of money. Just because he's the, he's the heir to the throne, you have to spend, you don't have the money. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, so yeah, Don't to, just because you haven't, if you start doing things that you shouldn't do. Yeah. We're a poor country. We don't have to say, oh, we, oh, our president came, we haven't got, we haven't got it. Yeah. Okay. That's our problem in the Gambian, in the Gambian culture in general. People like to show off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just cut your clothes according to your size and then we, we, this country will move forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I think those are, these are problems and we have seen the, the Institute of, of, of uh, I think um, our show is gone a long time now today. We probably should try and see if we can cut it uh, right now. But um, one important point, uh, last point we want to talk about is the the, um, the institute of 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 um, of of, of, of um, Republican Institute, International Republican Institute, the survey. And we started talking about that when we said Baro, uh, you know, there sixty six percent of the population is saying they don't want Baro to go for three three years term, um, you know, and and. And so many other things, but one important thing they raised was that um, you know UDP will have a, if we have a go for elections today, UDP will have twenty nine percent of the votes, and that um, you know they one 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 mistake I think they did was they lump all the others into one box and give it all to Barrow, and they gave Barrow twenty four percent of the votes. You know I think I have a problem with that because you know when when people say other. Because so many people say other and, and they say borrow and others, uh, uh, you know, you put them all together and yet you have a column that says other, which you are giving 1% to. I think that is very, very, I think that is, that is not very helpful. But overall, you know, um, the other issues that they talked about, like the, the access to internet, you know, it is so small, apart from on our smartphones and, and, and the access to computers, those things are so small and they're so worrying. You know, I think we have to talk, look about, look into those things and make sure that we change them. You know, and, and, I, only, and, and I, I believe the UDP government can have a big role to play into that, to make sure the penetration of internet, you know, in, uh, in, in the country, you know, is, is, is raised because that will bring so much jobs, that will bring so much skills training, you know, and, and, and so, so what do you think, uh, you, know, um, you know, the UDP can do to, to increase that? Uh, that margin, the 29%, because I think that's an important point, apart from the internet uh, penetration, uh, you know, um, because I think if we go for elections today and we go for, we, we go in for the, the new constitution, which says 50%, you know, um, and, and, and we go by their, their survey, which I don't think is really accurate, because it's about it's from a thousand people, and they gave, I think, 14% <laughs> ahead of uh, 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 APRC, and GDC. Um, so I'm, I don't know whether you look at this, that the survey. Well, I looked at it. Yeah. And I must say, I must commend them for going through all that uh, statistics and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, opinion polls are not always accurate. Yeah. I mean, I don't know whether you were here or you were, you were following British politics in 1992. When the exit poll said Labour Party is going to win with a swing of 11%, Labour Party lost the election. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very skeptical. I'm very skeptical. Even the Brexit. <laughs> I'm, 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 very, I'm very skeptical about opinion polls. Yeah, yeah. What, what it does show is that UDP is a formidable group within the political spectrum. Absolutely. That I can agree with it. As regard to percentage, I think we have to look at that and say, discuss that privately yeah, yeah. and see what strategies we have to do. Yeah. Because 29%, and I look at previous analysis, personally, I will say we have a lot of work to do. Yeah. 
and it's not a good sign for me. I will not be carried away by the fact that we are 20 percent we are ahead in the polls. I mean I would be I would be satisfied if we said that we are 51 percent ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But if we tell you that we're 29 percent at the moment, mm -hmm. and considering that Adam Abbas has got another one year or so to do all what he can in order to win the hearts of the people, mm -hmm. then surely I would not be dancing at the moment. But importantly, they put places like CA, you know, is it CAP or the CA? Uh, and even GAP and all those play people into maybe not GAP, GAP had its own color, which is one percent. But then the PA, which is gaining grounds from Doy mainly, they put them into, into, into the same box with Adam and Barrow. And even well, Marisok, I mean, Marisok, it's like Marisok, they put them all in. Well, it's 1,000 people you, you're interviewing, yeah? Yeah, that's true. that's true. And the population, the electorate is about 800, well. The fraudulent electoral register says we got 800,000 people on yeah, well, the register. Yeah. So these are things that we have to be very cautious about. Mm -hmm. All I will say, we have a chance, but we have to work harder. Yeah. I will not sit down and say, oh, we are living in the polls and relax. No, because when I, when I saw those polls, it reminds me of something else. Yeah, yeah. But I do not want to save life because I, I love UDP so much. <laughs> yes, I really want to save life. But I mean, all I know is that 29% or 24% yeah. guys, we got to work hard. No yeah. joke about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Yes, because um, yeah. what, so, what so you have to look at it is that UDP borough is a breakaway from UDP. The breakaway from UDP. Mm -hmm. And that is my way of being concerned. And when I look at it with other elections, when GPDP or PDP, what used to be called PDP, was a breakaway from NCP, it did have an impact on NCP's vote. Mm -hmm. When Mama Khan, the former political party, he, it had an impact on, on, on APRC. So we have to be very careful with these stats that we see. Mm -hmm. So, but I wouldn't say much about it when we're in, in coming, when, when we're in, uh, off, off the record, I will explain further about it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, we don't have time to talk about important policies like, um, you know ICT and how we can improve on and, and skills training. So hopefully we will do those those things um, a favor next weekend um, on Friday. I mean on Sunday, and uh, I hope um, we wouldn't have any disruptions and we can come a little bit early, um, as early as uh, you know six six p.m. you know UK time or even seven p.m. if that's if that's if that's okay. And, I think uh, 7 p.m. is okay. It's okay, yes, yes. Yeah, 7 p.m., okay, yeah, 7 p.m., <laughs> 7, 20 p.m. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, we thank you very much, our viewers, um, and, and, uh, and you know, we understand that it might not look very impressive when we have live viewers. Um, we had gone up to 100. Currently, we are about, um, we are about 40 to uh, 44, which is, is, and it's going down. I'm not sure 46 is rising, but, um, you know, um, at some point we go up to 100 and 114. But the important point is that, um, you know, overall we get six, 7,000 views, you know, from, from our program. We understand it's a challenge for, for some of our viewers to understand English and, 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 the, cons and, and the things that we, we speak here. But um, we want to encourage our viewers that, um, you know, even if it is 10 people, 20 people on, on the live program watching us, we will still be here talking to you about these important issues because at the end of the day is the overall um, you know number that have seen it afterwards you know if you check this uh, video again in a week time it goes to 7000 uh, you know 7000 7600 that's the average that we see every week on so that means uh, people don't people man might, might be busy watching other programs that are going on right now 
um, we have uh, programs like um, uh, what's the other program called again um, on Fatu Network. Um, yeah, so we have other programs there, um, as well as um, you know uh, 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 other programs uh, like Uncle Hussein's program that we're going on. And the time that we are on now, it means some and, and Sunday, some people are busy in, in Europe, but they take out their time eventually to come and, and watch our important programs. And, and talk about this. So the important point is that, um, you know, even if it's a very few number that is coming on live to talk to, to, to watch us, we understand the challenge that uh, some people may have with, with English language and, and, and also the concept that the, the, the things that we talk about here. But be rest assured, we are going to be here um, every Sunday to talk to you about the important issues that we may have. And, uh, you know, we are encouraged. We thank you very much, our viewers, by the overall the uh, number that watches us every week, you know, um, you know, we are we are we are we are looking at at eight thousand now a week up to or, or you know up to eight almost eight thousand per week, um, so that is that is a good encouragement and we thank you very much. Um, I'll, I'll I'll hand the uh, the mic to my uh, co-host, Mr. Goswell, to 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 bid you farewell. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, Kejo. I think to add on what you've said. Um, this weekend is a, a, a very intense weekend because everybody's hopes and minds are on what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if people have, are spoiled for choice as to where, which channel they want to listen to. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the good thing about it is that this is a diversity show that we are, we are not saying anything derogatory, we are not saying anything negative, we are saying something positive. Mm -hmm. And we are just giving our, 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 our thoughts as to what should be the burning issues. Now, we, we are open, we understand that over the week we normally hit 800, and secondly, during the time factor now, other countries may be still engaged, other people may be in the diaspora, may not be maybe involved in something else that they can't watch the program now as it's live. Yeah. So these are things that we have to look at the positives. Yeah. yeah. And I'm more than always grateful to spend my Sunday and talk to people the little I know, mm. share my info, share my little knowledge that I have about the burning issues. And it's always a joy to receive feedbacks that they enjoy the program. Mm. But before I go, it's one message I've got to say. Yeah. Seno Dabo, lawyer Seno Dabo has already made his point. Mm -hmm. Now is the time for us, the foot soldiers, to do our last plea. Yeah. yeah. To those 23 MPs, NAMs, that could vote against going to the third reading of the bill. Yeah. This is once of a lifetime opportunity mm -hmm. that I have always prayed that I'll witness. And today, I hit a situation where the, 2002, the 2022 constitution or 2021 constitution is in intensive care for the simple reason that there's been a misconception of what the law is. Yeah. I can understand some of the concerns raised, but let me tell you something. Think about the national interests. You MPs voted in favor for us to have a CRC. We went out and implemented what you said, we're coming back to you now and giving you a report. Don't, don't ridicule it. Don't, don't make it a Faraba Banta situation <laughs> where an inquiry was held. Mm -hmm. They came with their report and up to today we haven't heard about any criminal, criminal prosecutions. Yeah. What I'm saying, and to our supporters 
continue to stay firm and committed to the struggle. Victory is just around the corner. Yeah. But we have to win the trust of the Gambian people. Thank you and good night. All right. Thanks a lot, Mr. Goswell. Thank you, our viewers. Um, we, we're really grateful for this. And thank you to the UDP media um, host and, 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 and the people who, who set this thing up. Um, so thank you. And I will hope we'll see you next Sunday. Thank you. Next Sunday. Yes. God willing, next Sunday. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good night. Have a good week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.